Good morning. Welcome back into Wake Up America. I'm Rob Finnerty. Let's get to the very latest out of the southern border where U.S. Customs and Border Protection reported over 221,000 immigrant encounters at our southern border in the month of March. That's the highest monthly total in U.S. history, over 24 percent of what we saw just one year ago. For more, let's check in with Newsmax border correspondent and retired captain of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Jason Jones, back with us. Jason, I mean, those numbers... That it, so some are saying it's the highest in history. Uh, we know that it is the highest since at least February 2000, 2020, uh, 22 years ago. And we're not technically in the worst part of the year down there. It's really April, May, June. Um, and with Title 42 being rolled back, this is going to get even worse, isn't it? Oh, Rob, you're absolutely right. And, you know, you're really nailing it on the head here. The the winter months are supposed to be the lowest months. And right now, in the last six months, the men and women of U.S. Customs and Border Protection have apprehended over a million people. And like you just said, last month, two, over 220,000. In the first 14 days of April, already 107,000 preliminary numbers we're looking at. So we're seeing things we have never seen before at the southwest border. Let me give you an example of what continues to flow every single day. This is video we got yesterday from the men and women of the Texas Department of Public Safety's Elite Aircraft Division near Valentine, Texas, which is out there in the Big Bend area. And just take a look at this group. There's 10 individuals completely dressed head to toe in camouflage. Notice though, all the camouflage is matching. So, you know, we, we always are being told by our government that these are people just looking for a better life. But yet, look, they've got to work with La Lina Cartel to purchase the same backpack, the same shoes, the same hat, and the same equipment to cross into the United States illegally out there in West Texas. And this is great work by DPS, because think about this. If it wasn't for video that we're getting from aircraft like this, if it wasn't for local law enforcement across the southern border, you know, sharing with the American people what's really happening, they would not be able to see to the degree of what's happening. Let me give you another example. You see these wristbands? This is what I took this week from 121 night men, women, and children that cross, all given to them by the Gulf Cartel. This is human trafficking, not human smuggling. Any one night, you can go there in Roma, Texas, where we also recorded a gun battle, and see what's happening. So while we focus, and you hear a lot from Republicans and Democrats about how they're going to sue the administration, they're going to do this, they're going to go after the immigration issue. It's an important issue, don't get me wrong. But the national security failures, Rob, are just incredible. And this virus of human trafficking is just one example of what we're seeing down there unfold. Jason, how do you think this plays out? We've got a month till they officially roll back Title 42. Yesterday, the fifth biggest city in America, Philadelphia, re-implemented an indoor mask mandate. Um, the CDC uh, also tried to extend the mask requirement on airplanes. That was rolled back by a district judge in Florida yesterday. So you don't have to wear a mask if you fly commercially, at least today. Um, but they did that because they wanted to, quote, investigate the severe of the BA2 subvariant of uh, Omicron. So basically, you know, everybody in the U.S. is still dealing with COVID restrictions and a variant that doesn't seem super severe, yet at the southern border, they have no problem rolling back the most effective public health measure that we've seen throughout the crisis uh, at the southern border as it relates to COVID. Yeah, you can't make it up. And, you know, when I'm down there and I watch groups of 120 one night, the next morning, go to another bend in the river and watch 150 plus and coming, by the way, Rob, from all over the world, because one of the things they're not saying is they don't let Mexican citizens stay in the country. They kick them back. But everyone else is allowed to come in. They're not wearing masks. Yeah, Jason so Jones. Just an example of what you're saying. It's unbelievable. And, and looking at the wristbands in your hand there, I remember when you first joined us when this all started over a year ago, you had one wristband. Now it looks like you walk through the parking lot at Six Flags or something like that. Um, it's, it's unbelievable to see that. It's Jason, terrible. we'll check back in with you throughout the week. We appreciate the update. Thank you. Good to be with you. You too. All right, switching gears now. The midterms are coming up, and the GOP is eager to launch investigations in Hunter Biden if they win back power in the House and Senate come November, 203 days away. Meantime, Hunter enjoyed the White House Easter egg roll, Allison, in his first <laughs> yeah. public appearance since the New York Times Washington Post authentication of the uh, Hunter Biden laptop, even though the New York Post did that 18 months ago. Yeah, you're right. Ari, joining us now is New York Congresswoman and member of the House of Foreign Affairs Committee, Claudia Tenney. Uh, welcome back to Wake Up America. Good morning. Great to see you guys. Great to see you. All right, I want to start with this. The Hill uh, is reporting that um, President Biden told former President Obama that he's running again in 2024. Your thoughts? 
Well, he's got to say that because they don't have anyone else to run other than Kamala Harris, who may not even get the nomination with uh, the Democrats. Well, what about Hillary? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary, oh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that be great for the Republicans to put Hillary up again? Uh, you know, this is and he's I, I, I think he's going to be, what, 82 or so by 82. the time that happens. Yeah. Yeah, and, and honestly, it has nothing to do with age. We know that Biden is cognitively impaired. He's had some kind of issues. Uh, there were strokes or whatever, and so he sh it shows. And he's unable to really conduct the job. He doesn't project strength uh, or leadership around the world, which is why we're seeing the entire world in chaos. He's making terrible decisions. We have huge inflation, which is a top issue, crime, which is a huge issue, the border, which is, even though I'm in New York and, and uh, this every state is a border state, this is a big issue in New York. We have a border as well, but you're just seeing just a colossal error on every single issue. And I think a lot of it was just made even worse. It all kind of really went downhill with the debacle in Afghanistan, the tragedy of 13 service members killed needlessly because of his uh, terrible decision in Afghanistan. And by the way, which he has no regrets. He said, this is the way it would have been. So no, no regrets that yeah. we created 13 gold star families uh, because of his terrible decision, mm -hmm. even against what his military officers said. So this is the mm -hmm. most disastrous uh, administration probably in, mo in the modern era. And yet, the you know, he's got to say he's going to run again. I just can't imagine that this guy could possibly be on the ballot in 2024. Yeah, he apparently made The a, Democrats ma are scrambling. No, I'm with you. And he apparently, you know, made an effort to, to say that to Barack Obama, uh, maybe deliberately and maybe after the midterms we see a pivot. Who knows? I don't buy anything that comes out of the White House right now because of, to your point, there's just been no the Easter bunny might accountability. Know. The Easter bunny does that, know. that Easter yes. bunny I saw at that Easter egg roll yesterday with Hunter Biden, that yeah. Easter bunny would definitely know. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, we saw Hunter Biden yesterday, his first public appearance uh, in some time at the White House Easter egg roll. Uh, the big question now is, Congresswoman, and I know that you are, are all over this story, but if Hunter Biden is indicted, that's going to be bad news not only for Hunter, but for Joe Biden and the administration as well. Do you think maybe the New York Times and the Washington Post finally acknowledge the Hunter Biden laptop because they know something is about to happen and they don't want to be journalistically embarrassed again? Yeah, let's put it this way. I was shocked to see Hunter Biden at the White House. It, it just shows how un self unaware they are. They This guy is a liability of, of epic proportions to yeah. President Biden. He is going to be, you know, the laptop from hell which, by the way, the New York Times came out, uh, surprisingly, 14 months after the New York Post put it on, and they were, and the, and the uh, New York Post was censored by Twitter, mm. uh, and, and actually said, oh, wow, this is a legitimate, this, this uh, uh, laptop, and, 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 and now even the information. And it also, I think what's particularly bad is that 51 former intelligence officers, yeah. and I can't emphasize this enough, said that this was clear Russian disinformation. Every one of those people who served our government are probably living on pensions. Well, should yeah. say half uh, of them are MSNBC and CNN and contributors. Penis. Right, I know. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, and exactly, yeah. and CNN like like uh, John Brennan. Yeah. This is a disaster, and this is a disaster for the Democrats. So let me just tie Joe Biden into this. Joe Biden is the big guy, according to Tony Bobulinski. Mm. This all came out before the election. Yeah. It was all quelled by the by the mainstream media because they didn't want this truth out. Yep. They because the evidence showed that possibly 10 percent wouldn't have voted for joe right. biden this is going to be a disaster i don't think he's going to be the nominee in 2024 right. notice no democrats running for office in this big red wave here yeah. are going to joe biden and here we right. are There's i know no, you're right certainly and more to it's come a disaster it and comes. no one wants him coming to the district yeah. to campaign on their behalf Absolutely either which not. is a big part of this congresswoman claudia tenney thank you so much i'm sorry we ran out of time but we appreciate you coming on with us today good to see you congresswoman Thanks so much thank you Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.